Hi folks and welcome back to the WTF and in today's video we are talking all things Land Rover Defender but if you haven't got a Land Rover uh, some of the things I'll be talking about this evening can be applied to other SUVs 4x4s. <clears throat> anyway, um, I've had this Land Rover for about, when did I get it, 2018 and <clears throat> the last few weeks I've been sort of doing some various upgrades on it uh, which just generally to really to preserve it because obviously <clears throat> Land Rovers are particularly prone to rusting in certain areas and also to make the uh, general comfor comfortability, if that's the right word, um, or the just a general improvement in the uh, driving experience of these vehicles because as you know Land Rovers um, defenders um, they're not uh, particularly known for their sort of uh, comfort but what we've done is we've done some modifications, um, a number of modifications actually, which I'm going to show you quickly, uh, which will hopefully, um, if anybody's interested in bandies like uh, like I am, um, should get a better idea, hopefully some good hints as to how to make these a little bit better. Anyhow, without further ado, let's quickly show you what I've done on this vehicle and uh, yeah, see what you think. So I think one of the initial defining moments that sort of made me decide to <clears throat> do some upgrades on this Land Rover was this ding in the door which was caused by the gate um, and I'm going to be taking this to the panel beaters tomorrow to try and get this beaten out but, the, but uh, <clears throat> because the door had to be taken off I thought I would use this opportunity to change a couple of things. Um, the first thing I did was actually to replace all these um, hinges on the doors. Now the hinges on the Land Rover are quite interesting because first of all um, <clears throat> the, um, the they're made of aluminium alloy or steel, I, th I think it's steel actually because uh, they do tend to rust and the bolts are made of steel um, which is a bit daft really when you consider that there's lots of aluminium around and you're going to get a chemical reaction and you're going to get corrosion which is what you can see there. Um, but one of the problems with these, these um, door hinges that people uh, quite tempted to unscrew the um, bolts and nick your doors which apparently has been reported on uh, quite a number of occasions so in order to deal with that what I've done is I've replaced um, all the door hinges with um, stainless steel door hinges which will hopefully prevent them from rotting and um, we've also got some um, security Torx type uh, bolts which will uh, make it a bit difficult for any potential thieves to um, be tempted to nick the doors. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so this door actually is going in tomorrow to have to have that dent beaten out. So um, and hopefully that same time they will finish off uh, replacing the uh, the hinges. So one of the other things as well that I replace moving on down here is the um, these things here the uh, wing mirror mounts uh, are basically aluminium alloy um, <clears throat> and these things were just totally corroding all the powder coated paint on these was just flaking off um, but the rest of the thing was okay structurally it was all right so um, I uh, got the old um, angle grinder with the uh, wire brush on it and then uh, got all the old paint off and resprayed that with hammerite so that was quite a quick fix and um, this mirror here, which uh, had a ding in it, it was cracked, so that's been replaced. Uh, so one thing about Land Rovers is that some of the parts are actually quite cheap. So that was about £35 for a new wing mirror. Um, if this was a BMW, you're probably looking at, say, uh, £1,000 for a new wing mirror. But uh, Land Rovers, you know, there are advantages. Cheap, cheaper stock from that was from Amazon, that was. Uh, so that's a new wing mirror. Um, what else have I done on it? Well, I've still got a bit more work to do. I've got to replace these. These need to be stainless steel as well. Um, oh yeah, when I had my little accident with the gate, uh, the um, there's a sill that runs along there. Um, that was also bashed in. So I thought, well, uh, why not take the opportunity and replace the sill with a rock slider, tree slider. So in case I... Uh, happen to hit any large rocks on my way uh, to work um, left by uh, various uh, nefarious individuals I will be able to um, tackle them without any problems with these 
heavy duty stainless steel rock sliders, or not stainless, sorry, steel rock sliders. Uh, so yeah, there we go. And they were actually not too difficult to put on. Um, all the original rusted out steps, which I will show you uh, outside the shack here. These were the original Land Rover steps. Pretty well rusted. There we go. Nothing survives the Swansea weather. Everything rusts. Anyhow, moving on. Let me tell you what other modifications we've done. So we're coming to the rear cross member. I've given this a bit of a clean up. This wasn't too bad actually, but the tow hitch was quite rusted. So I've cleaned all that up, put some hammerite on there and uh, the, um, the rear cross member looks as good as new actually. I'm quite pleased with that. And the other thing I did, moving around the rear door, in true, in true uh, jet engine fashion, I had a leftover sticker from uh, the RB211 days. That is a genuine Rolls-Royce engine sticker. Uh, my spare wheel carrier was looking a little bit tatty, so what I've done is I've resprayed this with just some cheap acrylic paint, UV resistant, and uh, stuck the Rolls-Royce engine sticker on there. So I've given that a new uh, lease of life. Um, okay, so moving to the inside, what have we done on here? So I've spent the last few weeks um, soundproofing the Land Rover. Now, uh, Land Rover is notoriously noisy. And um, so what we've done is basically stripped out all the seating in here, which is actually quite easy to do. Everything unbolts. It's just like, as everybody says with Land Rover Defenders, it's just like a Meccano set. So everything unbolts and all these roof panels um, are not that difficult to remove. So you've got, I don't know if you can, oh, it's a little, yeah, I don't know if you can see these things here. These are sort of like what they call fir tree clips. And there's quite a few of those all around all these roof panels. And what you do is you get a pair of side cutters and you just simply snip them off. Um, <clears throat> don't try to remove them. You, you can try to remove them, but it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, they end up bending and breaking. Uh, so what I did is snip, snip all those out. Uh, you can order more of those off eBay there. They're not that expensive. And then you can remove all these roof panels. And I've put um, some of this uh, sound insulation in. So we've got two types here. We've got the um, kill mat, which is the Sometimes people have used what's called dodo matting, but it's, it's basically the same. It's a bitumen based stuff, which just sticks on. So the purpose of this is that it changes the resonant frequency of the panels so that you don't get that sort of thudding all the time. And you only need one or two of these pieces. You don't need to cover the whole uh, roof or the whole back with this. You can if you want, but it's probably not that necessary. And you can apply this to the doors, and which is what I did, you know, take off the door trim. And the um, the second stuff I used was this stuff. I got this. It's not that expensive. This is sort of neoprene rubber with a sort of foil type stuff here. Um, this is about seven mil, I think it is. And this again helps to deaden the uh, the sound. So I've put this sort of underneath the the wheel arches here um, on both sides and underneath the this is the rear tub. And I've also placed a uh, similar sort of thing on the roof. Uh, so uh, taking all this roof, roof uh, headliner off and put the uh, sound deadening in, in which, um, uh, well, if you want my honest opinion, does it make a difference? A slight difference. You know, Land Rovers are not renowned for their uh, sound. I, I would say that it takes the edge off it. It certainly takes the edge off it, gets rid of the rattles. It's not going to sound like a, a Range Rover. It's not going to sound like a luxury Merc or something like that. So, you know, um, it certainly will take the edge off a lot of the rattles, but don't expect it to sort of 
you know, miraculously be 100% uh, like an acoustic chamber. It, it, you're not going to get that. You will still get noise coming through from various places. But uh, um, if you've got a roof rack where you get a lot of air turbulence, a lot of drumming, it's it is worth uh, soundproofing the uh, soundproofing the roof. So what I would call phase two of the uh, modifications on this Landy um, <clears throat> are sort of sort of electrical enhancements. So the first thing I did was, um, while I had all the roof uh, panels out, was to install this um, uh, reversing light. Well, it's not really reversing light, so I think they call it a work light. Um, so one of the problems I've had is that when I, when I uh, get sort of called out in the middle of the night, um, it's pitch black here, we don't have any street lights, and uh, if you want to reverse, and I've got to reverse from here, that's the shack. We've got to go all the way back through that gate. Uh, that's the jet fuel uh, depot. And um, if you don't have a light at the back, it is quite difficult to negotiate. So uh, I invested in this, um, what they call a work light, uh, which actually works quite well. Um, and that should, should certainly uh, helps when you're sort of reversing in, in sort of very dark areas and you, you can see where you're going. Uh, so that, that was quite easy to do. We've just run the cable um, from the, um, well, basically, I don't know, let's have a look, from here all the way down, it comes down here, down there, and you can see some of the other cables which are from the roof, from the spotlights on the roof. Just trying to get into focus a bit. And they basically run all the way down and then it follows, the, goes underneath the carpet, then goes into the front. I mean, there are options about running it across the, along the headliner, you can do that, but if you want to remove it again at a later stage, that means removing all the headliner, which is a right pain in the backside. So I've just sort of done it discreetly like that and it seems to work. And just to show you how I've run the cable, so this is all the cables. There's also coaxial cable in there for the uh, <coughs> antenna supports, which are on the roof rack. We've got a couple of uh, SO259s for uh, two, a two meter rig. Um, and also if you want a CB aerial, you can, you know, same sort of thing. Uh, so we've got some coaxial cable running down underneath this carpet and then uh, basically going up into the, uh, uh, into the, um, uh, battery box into the front console. So finally the um, other major upgrade that we're doing is um, replacing the um, original Land Rover radio which um, oops, is upside down, there we go, is a, a CD FM AM radio <clears throat> with something a little bit more uh, modern. Uh, this um, this unit, uh, well, it works all right, but it's um, it's not that great. So what I wanted to do is replace this unit with what they call a double DIN uh, stereo, so I can do Apple CarPlay. You know, you can use the phone. And so what we're going for is this unit here, which is a JVC. Um, this is a Apple. This will do Apple CarPlay. It's got all sorts of things on it. Um, and uh, hopefully should make things a lot easier. So if you want to use the phone or, you know, it's got, uh, you can use Google Maps and um, all sorts of weird stuff. But in order to install this, we've had to do some quite um, <clears throat> major uh, modifications, which uh, I will show you. So as you can see here, um, <clears throat> we've had some um, uh, sort of major surgery to the uh, the dashboard here. Um, don't be put off by this, it's actually not as difficult as it um, might appear. The um, central dash section of a Defender actually comes off quite easily, just a few screws and it just clips off. The radio uh, comes out quite easily as well. Um, <clears throat> and all these switches, these push button switches, you know, um, have to be uh, uh, you know, you again, have to be removed, and, but they all come out, um, they all unplug, and it's all relatively straightforward. 
so in order to to install a double din unit uh you know something like apple carplay um screen or whatever you you the original um dash basher is not um obviously big enough the hole is uh, too small because it's a single din unit uh so what you have to do in order to um mount a double din unit in defender you will have to purchase a um a sort of a modified um front panel there which and it does require relocation of some of the switches as you can see there which i'm sort of busy doing at the moment which means cutting a hole in the side dash which just actually isn't that difficult um and again if you're interested in upgrading your defender to put a double din unit in um <clears throat> you know don't be afraid to get a saw out and um and cut out i got this i got a kit uh from mud uk um and uh the, their kit actually is pretty good i think you can buy them from sort of any sort of um i think dynamic sounds also sells the defender uh dash which you can use either for td5 or um slightly later puma models um and um yeah you have to just relocate a few switches but it's not difficult you know um it's quite easy to do and i've uh, i've added a couple of things i've added um the uh a push button switch for the rear light for the rear work light um and i've i'm still waiting for a few bits and bobs i'm waiting for a reversing camera which i'm going to install at the same time because i think one should just do that and uh you know do everything at the one uh, you know in one in one lot i think that's probably the best way to do it anyhow let me just show you the actual um uh, front fascia's hit front fascia dash fascia whatever you want to call it um just so how it compares with the original so we got these two <clears throat> uh, front dash fascia's side by side and you can see obviously there's quite a big difference now it is it is re it is quite easy and take my word for it it's not difficult to to do this conversion um i know some people have had sort of professionals do it but and charge sort of hundreds of pounds but it's, it, it, if you if you can wield a soldering iron um <clears throat> it isn't it isn't that difficult um so you can see the difference in the um the apertures there and there's a few switches that have to be relocated uh to the side panel which is you know what i showed previously um so yeah, and you can, the, the big problem is that the, these kits, um, unfortunately are not particularly cheap. Um, this, this whole kit with the, uh, the this, this modified, um, Defender, uh, dash plus the, um, uh, various other bits that come with it from Mud UK is about 200 pounds. So you have to factor that in when you buy your sort of double din unit, but what they recommended on Mud UK, which, um, is quite interesting is that um they recommended the jvc unit so i bought the whole lot together um because the jvc unit is quite is a bit shorter than the um stand than some of these uh double din units where you have where you're a bit limited with space behind the defender dashboard so that's something to bear in mind i mean you can fit in a standard you know double din unit which has a cd player which is slightly has a slightly longer chassis i think it's about 160 I think it's about yeah 150 160 millimeters which is a bit of a tight squeeze behind the defender dash but it is doable um but if you the 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 the, the package from mud uk um is a jvc unit like i showed um which fits quite nicely into this whole thing and saves you a lot of hassle so if you're not too fussed about what sort of unit you'll want to install um and you're not one of the uh, audio fools who uh, are wanting to have Base reflex and God knows what else. Then um, it's the way to go. And don't forget, you know, um, if you're installing some high-end stereo in a Land Rover, then um, your limiting factor is your ears, and um, you probably uh, probably ought to think again. I would say because installing a high-end stereo in a Land Rover is probably not ideal. You're probably best to do that at home. Uh, but something to bear in mind um, when you're spending a lot of money on uh, in-car entertainment, you know, go for what's practical rather than, you know, what you think is, um, you know, the ultimate in in-car entertainment. So there we go. Just one other thing as well. If you're thinking of replacing the uh, <coughs> Land Rover Defender 
um, original stereo, one of the things you might want to do, if, especially if you get one of these double DIN units or or even an, a, a single DIN um, <clears throat> uh, unit, one of the things you want to do, especially if you want to listen to DAB, is you're going to have to replace the aerial. Um, now, some of these um, radios actually come with the sort of DAB uh, antennas which sort of stick on the windows. Now, I didn't particularly want to go with that. I think they probably look a bit untidy. Uh, so what I what I did is actually got this from Amazon, uh, which is just a normal standard FM and FM, AM, and DAB um, radio antenna. Um, the old original, the stock Land Rover Defender antenna is quite easy to remove. It's not that difficult. There is a there is a sort of hard to reach um, <clears throat> uh, screw right at the bottom which sort of holds it in place, um, which if you've got a snorkel fitted um, is actually a bit of a pain to get rid of, but you can just smash it with a screwdriver and it, um, the plastic uh, thing that sort of holds the screw and just sort of, you know, just gets destroyed and you can pull the whole thing out. Uh, so that was quite easy to do. Um, and you can route the wiring um, quite easily into the, um, um, <clears throat> the dash through the original hole where the original coax was fed through so that's quite easy to do it's and these um, These little aerials actually have a built-in preamp and they require 12 volts um, So yeah, they're quite easy to install and I think this is quite nice because you can listen to DAB radio, which is something that my um, Land Rover <clears throat> uh, Radio didn't really have it just had AM and FM uh, So I think I think that is more or less the sort of upgrades I'm doing for the time being on this vehicle. Um, and I've been surprised actually that, you know, despite it being 10 years old now, um, it's still in relatively good nick. There wasn't, there wasn't um, too much rust. I did find one or two areas of rust which I've treated, but um, overall, um, you know, I'm quite pleased with it. It's quite, they're quite nice. Um, uh, vehicles quite fun to drive everybody waves at you when you pass somebody else in the Land Rover um, so uh, perhaps everybody should get one anyhow till we um, till we meet again and do some more a bit more electronics a bit more jet engines um, <clears throat> uh, till we meet again yeah so um, happy days see you again soon